The FIRS is a very important agency, and I wanted to underscore the importance of your work by coming out here to meet you as one of the first agencies I'm meeting. The federal government's medium-term plan is hinged on diversifying the economy away from over-dependence on the oil and gas revenues to the non-oil sector. Basically, the mandate of FIRS is to assess, collect, and account for all taxes accruable to the Federation. Uh, these taxes that are generated on a monthly basis are divided and shared at the FAC allocation meeting between the federal government, states, and local governments. So we're quite aware of the responsibility before us, because any month that our revenues do not hit the expected mark, that means the three tiers of governments may be a bit short in their revenue profile. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of Tax Matters. How has your week been? I am Pearl Namaka, and with me on the episode is Chiamaka Ohauchi. Thank you for joining us. It is no longer news that there is a new helmsman at the Federal Ministry of Finance. On September 14, 2018, the Minister of State for Budgets and National Planning, Hajia Zainab Ahmed, was redeployed to oversee the Federal Ministry of Finance. The minister immediately swung into action, taking briefings and familiarizing herself with her new duty posts. In one of the very first outings outside the Federal Ministry of Finance in Abuja, Hajia Zainab Ahmed paid a visit to the Revenue House in Abuja on Monday, the 24th of September, 2018. On hand to receive the minister and her entourage was the Executive Chairman, Federal and Land Revenue Service, Mr. Babatunde Fowler. After restating the mandate of the FRS, Mr. Fowler gave a report card of the collection performance of the service in the recent time. There are certain tax revenues that are accrued to the Federation, and those are the revenues that highlight the distribution at FAC. Um, in 2015, we were able to achieve 89.81% of budget. In 2016, 92.05% of budget. In 2017, 99.53% of budget uh, for a total collection of 7.7 .7 trillion over the period. The second um, group of taxes are classified as other non-oil taxes. The, the um, highest tax type in that category is VAT, which happens to be the fastest growing tax type worldwide. And this is basically where we expect the bulk of tax revenue to grow in the non-oil sector. In terms of performance, in uh, 2015, we achieved 81.8% in that sector. In 2016, 17.75%. In 2017, 82.38% of that sector. So in terms of total uh, collection over the period, in 2015, we did 3.7 trillion in 2016, 3.3, .3, and in 2017, 4 trillion uh, naira. The total collected in 2018 was 3.5 trillion naira, compared to 2.5 trillion in the previous year, um, in the year 2017, showing an increase of 984 billion naira. The chairman spoke about e-services initiative of the FRS under which technology now drives the tax process from registration to payment and receipting. Now, the outcome of some of these actions, and I'll just highlight a few of the tax types. I'll talk about stamp duty. Basically, we have continued to see an increase in stamp duty between 2015 and 2017. Um, on assumption, we had a situation whereby we only had old stamp duty machines in about 14 out of the 36 states. So we first of all bought 100 brand new stamp duty machines for those who still want the manual process. So every state within the Federation does have a manual stamp duty machine. And for those who want to go by way of um, technology, who want to use the e-stamp duty option, they're also available uh, to use. 
Now, this solution went live first March 2017. And in terms of collection, in 2017, we collected 10.9 billion, which surpassed the total in 2016 of 5.6. So we almost doubled the collection of stamp duty and 2015 of 7.1 billion. On efforts being made to encourage tax compliance, in terms of compliance strategies, we had, first of all, introduced a tax amnesty in 2016, which attracted about 3,000 applications, whereby we waived interest and penalty, and we collected over 68 billion out of 92 billion established during that exercise. And then thereafter, VAIDS was also launched. We received 5,000 applications under the scheme, and with a declaration of 92 billion and a liability of 34.6 billion has been paid so far, while we expect the balance to be paid over the next 12 to 18 months. We're still trying to collate all the figures for the state governments. In her response, Adja Zainab Ahmed was full of praises for the efforts being made by the FIRS. The federal government's medium term plan is hinged on diversifying the economy away from over-dependence on the oil and gas revenues to the non-oil sector. And the report that uh, the chairman has uh, presented today indicates that that diversification effort is working by the reflection of the turn of the contribution of non-oil revenue to oil revenue over the last three years. We had hoped that we will maintain a ratio that turns oil revenue to 40% of uh, government revenues, while non-oil revenue is 60%. And I can see from the report that has been done today that the trajectory is the right one, that the progress that has been made is actually going to take us there. I'm glad that we have um, a team in FIRS that is not only expanding the tax base, was significantly improving uh, tax collection efficiencies, taking tax office closer to the people and making it easier for people to pay their taxes by all of these online e-tax initiatives that you have uh, undertaken. The VAIDS program has been, um, has been a success. It has closed. And a, a question I wanted to ask is, so what happens now after this? And already you've addressed that by the new compliance strategies that you're, you're implementing. But certainly it, is, it makes a lot of sense to prioritize the tax collection into larger categories first, uh, chase the big ones, and then before, before others. So uh, the effort you're doing in um, Abuja, Lagos, Oshun, and Kaduna is a commendable one, and I encourage you to please sustain the temple because we really do need these tax revenues. We need to continue the effort to strengthen uh, the, oil, uh, the, the non-oil sector and on your own part to increase the efforts you're doing so that the non-oil sector becomes the greater part of revenue that we, that we um, on a sustainable basis that we have in this, in this country. The minister made a pledge and gave a charge. The Minister of Finance will continue to work collaboratively with you and we are there to support all the efforts that you're doing and that as much as possible we should um, interface very frequently because for, for us the directive I have is, is increasing revenue is the most important task ahead of all of us right now. So you've done well but the result of good work is more work, all of you. You should please just tighten your belts and uh, continue with the efforts that you're doing because literally a country depends on the work that you do to show up revenue collections to support the work of government. Another pat on the back for the FIRS. Oh yes, the FIRS is doing a great job.
London, New York or Lagos, business or holiday, home or office, you can now carry out your tax transactions from anywhere in the world. You can now file all your tax returns, pay online, get a receipt and even process your tax clearance certificate from anywhere in the world online and in real time. All you need to do is log on to www.firs.gov.ng and click on e-services and be introduced to the world of innovation, convenience and transparency from the FIRS. You can also pay stamp duty as you register a new company with the CAC or for other transactions that request time duty payment online. You can also file your withholding tax returns and determine the withholding tax deducted from you is in government covers so that you can get your receipt within 45 days as long as the deduction has been remitted. Yes, all of this and more online at www.firs.gov.ng slash e-services. FIRS, making tax administration as easy as ABC. Please note that all FIRS services are free of charge. This message is from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. It pays to pay your tax. Thank you for staying with us. A few episodes ago, we brought you the story of the FIRS Stakeholders Forum held in Lagos on Thursday, 6th of September, 2018. The forum was held to discuss issues of national importance with respect to tax administration and national revenue. On today's episode, we want to bring you more from that agenda setting event. We begin once again with the Executive Chairman, Federal Inland Revenue Service. This is the new VAT certificate, which will be given to all taxpayers. And we expect them to display it in their places of business. We also found out, and I'll give you actual figures, that a number of businesses were not even registered taxpayers, and they were collecting VAT. Now, without having a tax ID as an agent or a collector of VAT, there's no way you can even remit that VAT to government. So in short, they were collecting this money and adding it to their income or spending it. If we have got over 6,000 accounts providing services, making money within this economy and this society, are not even registered for tax payment. I don't think it's fair. On measures put in place to ease tax compliance. What have we done? We did a tax amnesty in 2016, the first, where we received over 3,000 applications. And we're able to have about 96 billion uh, in terms of declared liabilities, and we've collected so far about 68 billion. Under VAIDS, I'm talking about FIRS now, we received over 5,000 declarations, and the amount was also similar for 92 billion out of which 37 billion have been paid so far. We've also made it more convenient. You now have the flexibility in choosing your tax office. Prior to now, at times, your tax office might be an hour or two away from your office. Taxpayers can now choose where their file resides. But apart from that, we also have technology. Right now, a taxpayer does not have to come to any FIRS office to do any returns. It's called the e-solutions. And with this solution, it also brings into play accountability and transparency. All you require is to give a valid email address, a phone number to any FRS officer who maintains your account. And anytime a payment is made with your tax ID, you get an alert. You can download your receipts immediately. You can print out your receipts. You can confirm it to ensure that it has been paid to the right account. At the same time, you can, with this e-solution, you can pay online. You don't have to leave your office. You don't have to leave your home. You have a phone. You have a computer. You can pay your taxes online. So you don't have to give it to a third party to say, help me pay the tax and not be sure that will get to government. And you can do this anywhere in the world. Download your receipt immediately. 
that they had issues of withholding tax credits, receipts. We have now uploaded this system up to 2012. Meanwhile, meaning that if you had a withholding tax credit that you have not utilized and you're on this system, you can actually print it out yourself and use it to offset future tax liabilities. It's not, however, all carrots. The FRS also uses the stick. Now, when we look at our enforcement activities, because before we started applying all these strict measures, we have spent the first two years in having discussions with stakeholders at all levels, with taxpayers, educating them on the law, interacting, and on an average, before we even commence enforcement activities, usually it takes close to one year. We even added things that are not in our law. This is what we call a notice of non-compliance. We're not required to stick this on any business before we enforce. To date, we've stuck up 15,000 of these nationwide. And it's supposed to embarrass taxpayers. And out of embarrassment, we were able to generate 15 billion. Because any business that has this stock up, I doubt if they'll make much sales. But I'm saying that we don't have to take that route anymore. Let us try and change and start to do the right thing. And talking about enforcement, it seems to be yielding dividends. We started enforcement on a smaller level in 2016. After we spent the first year of engagement, and that was between May and December of 2016. The enforcement activities then yielded 10.9 billion. In 2017, enforcement activities yielded 12.5 billion. Between January to August, it has yielded 10.8 billion. So you see the issues here, if you look at it on a graph or otherwise, it seems like with enforcement, we get in more revenue. And I don't think that should be the process as Nigerians. We should not wait to the point of enforcement before we do the right thing. And let's be mindful that we're talking about tax. Tax is paid on profit. If you make no profit, there's no tax. Tax is paid on income. If you're employed, you pay no tax. So the fact that you have the opportunity and the privilege to be blessed, to make a profit, and to earn an income, the least one can do is to support the society in which you reside. The Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, calls on all corporate organizations operating in Nigeria to register for the purpose of payment of taxes and obtain a tax identification number TIN. All registered companies must obtain a tax identification number immediately from the nearest FIRS office. You can also collect and return tax registration forms from the Federal Inland Revenue Service Engagement and Enlightenment Tax Team's feet on compliance checks exercise in your area. A company which is yet to commence business after at least six months of incorporation must pay a pre-operational levy of 20,000 naira in the first year and 25,000 naira for subsequent years to obtain its tax clearance certificate TCC. Note that filing and payment of VAT and withholding tax returns must be done on or before the 21st day of every month. Register for VAT. File all tax returns as and at when due. Be a responsible corporate citizen of Nigeria. It pays to pay your tax. This message is from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. Welcome once again. The event lived up to its billings as a stakeholders forum. There was robust engagement from the floor with the executive chairman seizing every opportunity to make clarification. We must acknowledge the progress that the FRS has been making uh, in terms of pushing forward tax reform in this country. The technology initiative is well appreciated. Um, the most interesting being the withholding tax 
um, automation. I think if that really is done, it will ease a lot of the pressures on, on taxpayers. As far as I'm concerned, I think our tax laws are spent. We need tax reform, and this has to be on a consistent and continuous basis. It can't be that the last time we reformed tax laws in this country was 10 years ago, practically, 2007. In fact, right now it's, we're in our 11th year. Why can't tax reform be an annual event as it used to be, which is also the standard in other countries, that every year with the budget, we have a finance bill that launches new uh, fiscal initiatives and even give advance notice. Sometimes it will not be that year that it is implemented. We need that to happen. In addition to that is the digital economy. Everyone in the rest of the, uh, in other parts of the world, they're looking for ways to tax the digital economy. But we're leaving that also um, open in this country. We are not paying attention to it. And really, in a country like South Africa, all they just was a tweak to their tax. The issue of regulation about two pages, and that's it. So operators in, tax digital, in digital economy have to pay tax. And I believe Nigeria should really, should really do that. I must also say that tax authorities also need to respect the laws that they are meant to administer. Okay, VIT's uh, order came. And government said, okay, they waive penalties and interest for taxpayers. And yet some state governments are not respecting that order. Uh, in other words, so people who own and said they didn't pay tax over time. And some state governments are insisting penalty and interest must be paid. So really, we want joint tax board to wade into this issue and ensure that, that the terms of that order is respected. And those who came forward, whether as employees or as employers, their rights to enjoy uh, uh, waiver penalty and interest is respected. The last thing to mention, thank you, sir, for the recomposition of the Tax Appeal Tribunal. We now look forward to its inauguration as soon as possible. The government has agreed in principle to, when submitting the budget, any tax amendments or any new laws will be incorporated. We commend you for the progress uh, you have made. We're not taking for granted that progress has been made, uh, but because we are passionate about this country, we want more. So we continue to make more requests. I would like to encourage the FRS and the state tax authorities to please, as much as possible, even though it might be difficult, to stick with due process in whatever you do. Uh, we have instances, including accounts that are being frozen, where people were given seven days to respond. We know that in the law it is not seven days. You have up to 30 days. So if you ask me to do seven days, and I don't feel like doing seven days, you can't take legal action until such a time that the period required by law has been exceeded. Mr. Chairman, I would say that um, one of your biggest challenges is building trust. Building long-standing trust between you as a tax administrator and the taxpayers. Of course, this forum is one of those efforts to build trust, to make sure that you understand the taxpayers and that they understand you. One key thing is that right now, there is no clear difference between the treatment of companies that are compliant and the companies that are not compliant. It is difficult for a taxpayer to pay taxes and go home and sleep and say, I have paid my taxes. Because there's a lot of uncertainty surrounding tax audits, investigation issues that might come up. So one clear thing that needs to, because we referenced um, some other countries where people are so happy to comply voluntarily. And in some of those country, countries, to also mention, sir, is that when taxpayers have tax refunds, they don't even have to apply for it. It is the tax authority that will compute their refund and pay them. Um, tax refund, those are, these are the, the examples of how tax authorities can build trust to know that even if a taxpayer overpays, the FRS won't say, oh, how can anybody ever overpay? That means there is more. I'm coming to investigate you for overpaying taxes. So tax refund, sir, is one issue which even though it might look like you are giving out money, but it helps to build trust in the system. Just um, a little touch on the issue of substitution. We clearly agree that FRS has the powers to substitute banks, but such powers can, should, not, uh, um, should not be abused, sir. I had one of a, a client that um, went under VAT, had already written to the FRS, agreed payment plans, and 
was still the account was still restricted. Even though when we approached you, you listened to us and you um, reopened the account. But the record keeping of FRS and how they approach companies um, becomes very important. We did meet with the Minister of Finance, and as of date, we get two billion naira monthly during FAC for tax refund. And I can clearly state, based on the records that we have, every person who requested for a tax refund, apart from the current ones for this year, has been paid. We do hope that once again, we have been able to sow seeds of knowledge in you, our viewers. Knowledge that will set you free and make you tax compliant citizens of our great country. See you next week. Remember, it pays to pay your tax. Bye for now.